There are some good legislators on Capitol Hill who want to do the right thing. If, if the people demand it, there's momentum, they'll get H.R. 676. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome to this very important Universal Health Care Forum. Thank you all for coming. It's not going to be enough in the next 12 months just to say, I believe in health care for everyone. That's not enough. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> you're going to have to tell us, you're going to have to tell us very specifically what you're going to do to remove profit and greed from the system and put the system in the hands of the people of the United States of America. That's what we want to hear and that's what we expect. As a future physician, I have to tell you all that I am very, very terrified to graduate medical school and go out there and practice in this failing non-healthcare system that we have right now. When you are a modern industrialized nation and you have 47 million uninsured men, women and children, that's, that is a healthcare crisis. It's not a crisis that's coming. I've seen a man lose his leg because he couldn't afford antibiotics. I've seen children getting inadequate care because they have Medicaid as opposed to a private insurance. I'm terrified because in two years I have to take a note. I have to take a note that says that I'm going to do no harm and I'm going to provide the best health care out there for my patients. We are the only nation in the world with a health care system based on avoiding sick people. I'm terrified because I know that's impossible. How is that possible when the majority of my patients cannot even afford health care? We practice in our financing system the equivalent of medical apartheid in America. That's how we practice medicine in America. And we have got to stop doing this. This is the most important piece of legislation, the notion that everybody in the United States will be covered by one plan, single payer, from the day they're born till the day they leave this earth. That is the major goal of my whole career. The American public is ready for this. They've been waiting for the opportunity. Uh, this is an issue that affects all Americans, regardless of their political stripe. Uh, when you get sick, sickness doesn't know Democrat or Republican. As I travel around uh, this country, where we will be challenging all of the presidential candidates. It's gonna be on out of Iraq and universal health care. We don't want any nuancing. We don't want we don't want people talking around it. We don't want people being intimidated by the uh, insurance uh, company. We as nurses have made a commitment that we will fight tooth and nail to make sure that we have single payer. The Conyers bill passed in our lifetime. We are united to accomplish health care for all, universal, single payer, not for profit health care. I'm Cynthia Campbell. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for 30 years. Nine months ago, I was diagnosed with two cancers, rhabdomyosarcoma and ad adenosarcoma. These are very aggressive. It's a stage four cancer, which is the worst. The problem I'm having is that my insurance ends in two and a half months, and I really don't know where or how I'm going to be able to have insurance after this point. The system is broken. It doesn't work. We spend $2 trillion a year on health care in this country, more than $7,000 a person. And yet we leave a third of the people either uninsured or underinsured. Half of all personal bankruptcies due to illness or medical debt. When are we going to fix this? At least 18,000 adults die in this country each year for lack of health insurance. And this is uh, not a one-time event, this is over and over and over, month after month after month, that we have people dying just because we don't have an adequate health insurance system. Myth number one, we can't afford a single-payer health care system. The truth is that we can't afford not to have one. In the next 10 years, we will spend something like $31 trillion with a T on health care in this country.
the amount of money that we devote from our gross domestic product to health care, it's rising, which might be good for those of us who work in health care, but it's actually bad if you think about it from a political perspective because there's less money available for lots of other things, even national defense. Rising costs, in turn, reduce access to health care and frustrate any efforts to achieve uh, universal coverage. We spend 40% more on health care in America per capita than any other country in the world. We are way out of line in terms of how much money we spend on health care. It's not just that other countries spend less, it's that they do better. We trail the world in life expectancy here. Our infant mortality rate disgracefully high. We had this week the, the report that infant mortality is rising throughout uh, much of the South. Our maternal and mortality rate are extraordinarily high by international standards. We also do huge amounts of unnecessary and even harmful work that we bill the public for. We've recently learned that probably 85% of the coronary stents that we put in in this country do no good for our patients. So we have a healthcare system also wasting substantial resources that we could provide care with. How can we explain the paradox of spending more and getting less? think, you can't process. People say things to you, even simple things, and it just doesn't make sense. I had Blue Cross of California, and the reason they dropped me is that I had used the insurance once in the previous year, not for anything to do with this. I don't understand it. I've paid into these insurance companies. They've made a lot of money off my premiums, but it would be like going into a restaurant, paying for your meal, and if you ever dare expect them to serve it, you're never going to be allowed back in the restaurant again. You get a serious illness, watch them try to dump you from their walls. This should be illegal, it's a crime, they're a racket, and I want the private insurance companies out of the equation. A common story in this country is you think you have good coverage, and then you get sick and you can't work anymore. And after a few months, you no longer have that coverage. Registered nurses see people whose lives are lost, people who, whose health has declined, tremendous suffering just from a lack of a good health care system. We have had to deal with patients that have suffered as a result of the denial of care or lack of access to care because of the ruthless cutthroat insurance industry, not to mention the pharmaceutical industry, which is another problem. The situation for nurses in this fight is critical because the patient care crisis that the docs have described hits nursing directly because they're, of course, uh, in the forefront of patient care in the hospitals. And that patient care crisis derives from the fact that there is so much waste in the system and diversion of resources into administration. And all those things impact how nurses are able to carry out doctor's orders and care for their patients in the hospitals. We're registered nurses that see the effects of the denial of care every single day of our work life, and we're sick and tired of it. The biggest obstacle to change here is money, and it's the insurance companies, it's the pharmaceutical companies, it's all of the companies that make money off of the misery of patients. If you do go to the emergency room and they won't take care of you, or the insurance company calls them and says, no, we won't pay for this, or they're in the wrong hospital. They need to be in an in-network hospital. I think people should call 911 and report an attempted murder. Myth number two. A single-payer system would subject doctors and other providers to owners' bureaucratic regulations. In fact, nothing could be more onerous both to patients and providers than the multiple intrusive regulations currently imposed on them by the private insurance industry. 31 cents on a dollar spent on health care goes to something other than health care, and that's a problem. This happens because people are hired specifically to prevent their employer from paying the bill. In fact, an entire industry is based on that task. 
They're called insurance companies. They do not deliver health care. They do not heal. They do not prevent disease. They make money not providing health care. Blue Cross agency in, in my state employed, last time I looked, 6,192 people. That's to administer coverage for 2.5 million people in the state of Massachusetts. The Canadian National Health Insurance Program employed fewer people than that to administer coverage for 28 million Canadians. People do wait in Canada for medical care, but do you know who decides who waits and who goes first? Physicians. It's a clinical decision, not a pocketbook decision. We have people waiting in this country forever because they don't have the money. Patient care in this country doesn't pay. Let's face it, that's not where the money goes. It's diverted to profits, marketing, administration. It is not being used to pay for patient care. And that's what single payer promises to change. And that's why we're in the forefront of, of making that change possible. It is time that we stop funding the insurance industry profits and started providing care for the public that deserves it. This is in defense of the health insurance industry. I want to say a word on their behalf. Because they are publicly traded companies, our laws require that they maximize their profits for their shareholders. They have a fiduciary, right? That's what the law says, a fiduciary responsibility to maximize profits for their shareholders. The only way that they can maximize those profits is to deny care. The good news is that universal health care has been accepted as a goal by most mainstream politicians. The bad news is that they define it simply as requiring that the uninsured buy private insurance. The true objective seems to be to save the private insurance industry, which adds cost to the system but contributes no value at all. It's a parasite, in my view, on the, on the health care system. So many people are saying, well, this, we have a solution. It's to provide more subsidy for the insurance companies. The insurance companies make higher profits. Well, that's not an adequate response. Uh, President Bush has, has said we need tax subsidies to help people buy coverage. And uh, Mr. Colbert says it's so simple. Most people who can't afford health insurance are also too poor to owe taxes. But if you give them a deduction from the taxes they don't owe, they can use the money they're not getting back to buy the health care they can't afford. <laughs>single payer is the most conservative proposal out there. It costs less, it does more, and provides a level of quality. This would provide health care from birth to death, cover all medically necessary services, including prescription drugs, long-term care, and hospital care. And it has this funny question. Well, how are you going to pay for it? Uh, we're going to break the bank. Not under a nonprofit single payer system. We'll probably save about $350 billion per year just in re reduction in paperwork, administration, and bulk pur purchasing of drugs. This would be tantamount to improving and extending Medicare to the entire population. The secret actually is to marry the two strengths of the American healthcare system, public financing and private delivery. Medicare is, after all, a government-administered single-payer system embedded within our private market-based system. It's much more efficient than the private insurance system with overhead costs of less than 4%. And unlike private insurers, it can't select whom to cover or deny care to those who need it most. This plan would cost no more than the current health care costs in this country. We already pay for national health insurance in this country. The yellow part of the bar there is our public spending. Now, I've included here not just Medicare and Medicaid, but for instance, when President Bush goes to the hospital, we pay the bill. But that's counted as private spending because he has private insurance. And at present, one quarter of the private employer health insurance market are actually public workers. So if you count all that up, we're at 60% of the bill in this country coming from public sources at this moment. This, I believe, is the number one issue, Mr. Conyers, and that's why, Chairman, I'm so happy that you're beginning this process and pushing our ways and means and others to do this. Healthcare is a right, it is not a privilege, and that is what the message of H.R. 676 is. Overwhelmingly, I believe, the American people are ahead of the politicians on this issue for uh, national health insurance. Congress must act now 
because we can no longer wait. Patients' lives are at risk. Patients have died as a result. And I ask Americans across the country uh, who are asking me, you know, what can we do? This is something you can do. Write to your member of Congress and say, get behind HR 676. And I want to let you know that we have tons of medical students just like me, thousands of young soldiers across this country that are ready to fight for the most cost-effective and equitable way to provide the most quality, comprehensive, and affordable health care for everyone. We're ready to fight for single payer. It is so simple what we want, and it's so easy to get it if there is a political will. Everybody in, nobody out. Everybody in, nobody out. Everybody in, nobody out. I've had more members of Congress say, you guys have got a great bill, but you know you can't win. Somebody said to me, well, you may not win, but let me tell you something. We cannot take that attitude. There are too many people depending upon us. We can't take that attitude. So, so let's go on. I believe that there is nothing unrealistic about a single-payer system. What is truly unrealistic is anything else. Justice. Healthcare justice, that's what justice. we want, huh? America of the people. America by the people. America for the people. Which people are you talking about? Are you talking about the wealthy? With the means to stay healthy while 47 million go without. No doubt. We need a revolution. It's time for a brand new healthcare solution. Sing it on behalf of the uninsured. Cause I believe so absurd for America, the so-called greatest nation, to be in a healthcare crisis situation. Make some noise! This nation will rise up. Justice. Come from the land of milk and honey. But the healthcare industry's addicted to money. All for one, not one for all. 47 million in dial straits. Excluded by greed and wealth. So we got to get united in these states. And put the care back in health. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Sing healthcare justice for all. Can you sleep knowing you make promises you never keep? Life is short and talk is cheap. Time has come for you to earn your.